So this is our smallest module. Uh, so if you can pan on the building, this is a, our new hash hut version. It's a 10 foot, 10 foot wide by four foot deep module. This is the smallest uh, module of this size. We do one smaller, which is 90 kilowatt, which is basically the same thing, just half the size. It's like a little outhouse. This is our smallest, what we just call a module, where you, you have our standard, you know, centered man door and centered aisle. It's the smallest version, and it only has two racks, two PDUs, two fans, two filter systems. You know, it, it's, it's mirrored and symmetrical on both sides. So what we do is we offer a small modular option for the small applications like oil and gas, small facilities where you just need a little bit of extra power. A lot of it is oil and gas, but also any, any off-grid power generation where you don't need a lot of power. It's perfect size. And then when you want to go bigger, we just extend the building by four feet. So it goes from a 10 by four foot to 10 by eight, 10 by 12, 10 by 16, 10 by 20. Uh, those are standard sizes and the power level doubles or goes up by 180 kilowatt every module. So 180, 360, 540, 720, 900 kilowatt. And that pretty much is an overview. We're going to talk about the airflow and the filtration next. We do it a lot differently than a lot of uh, container people. Most containers, air comes in one side, out the other. Ours is a little different. We, the air comes in low on both sides, up and out. And this is sort of an iteration off the hash up product line we've been doing for many years. Uh, there's a few tweaks, like the building is wider. Uh, that allows for more airflow as it rises up, less of a D rate on the airflow. Uh, the, become closer. The fans are now low in the building on the intake side. So this is very important because the fans are no longer in the exhaust side on the hot side of the miners, like on the hot aisle. So as the heat is exhausting in a building, the heat is not derating in a fan or causing issues with fan motor overheat. It's now in the intake. The other benefit of this is that uh, it creates a positive pressure on the building. So you basically have two opposing fans. There's one here, there's one here. As the air comes in, it's creating a positive pressure. It's, it's lifting up and exiting. This is an inefficient way for airflow to move, but the reason for it is to protect your hardware from uh, snow or rain ingress, because anything that does get in and gets past the filters uh, has likelihood to drop out on the floor, especially if it's uh, heavy particulate. And we've seen this work wonders in the winter. The other reason why, aside from getting the air, uh, the booster fans below, we want the heat exhausting on the building above the intake. So if you follow me out here, this is pretty critical for winter climates in Canada uh, and the like. So not only is the fan out of the heat, so in the summer, the fan isn't gonna overheat and overload like you've seen in a lot of containers. Uh, it's this proprietary heat recirculation system is pretty critical because your filters will always cake off in the winter with hoarfrost. Uh, in a, even if you have awnings and your filtration is say on the horizontal and air is coming up into it, you still have swirling snow, swirling air, it all gets clogged. And that negative pressure in the building actually sucks your uh, filtration inwards. So any hairline cracks whatsoever, if you have a lot of airflow, but you always will have it quite a bit with these, with these ASICs blowing heat, it'll bring uh, snow in, that fine dusty snow that will accumulate and destroy your computers and short out PSUs and, and short out hash boards. So we get rid of the, that problem with this, you know, snow caking filters and also just preheating the air by having the heat above the intake, uh, which is unique to our designs. And the user can modulate how much heat he wants coming back to the build, back to the intake by simply changing these sliders. If you come look sort of under it, this is currently a uh, louver system that, uh, it, that normally the heat would come out and up through the deflectors. These deflectors basically pump the heat up and away from the intake when you want it, like in the summer. But in the winter, if you want it to come back down, you just open these and a bunch of the heat just pours back down and right back into the intake. So 
if you come a little closer again, these are identical and they're just flipped. So this piece here has a slider on the top. This one has a slider on the bottom. You can have it short circuit direct. You can leave this one closed. It'll just sort of shroud over the whole thing and sort of mix more with cool air. So you can sort of adjust how the sliders move to adjust how much heat you actually need, which you're measuring inside the building anyway. And lastly, the filtration system is one of the most important parts of like this upgrade to our old system. If you come look in here, you have a pre-filter. So these are just on barrel bolts. Any user can just open this up as I'm doing, pull it, pull the filter out and change it. So that's your primary or, or pre-filter that gets most of the crap. Usually you can put a snow blind filter on that, like a, a finer, tighter filter, which we don't currently have in the building. Or you can leave it that way. And then on the secondary filter, you can add that, or you can put, uh, put that snow blind on both layers. So back in here, uh, the secondary filter also what well, protects you from the fan. There's a steel barrier behind here that you can't penetrate by like accidentally kicking through it or something. So you don't get your leg torn off. This filter is the same deal. These barrel bolts come down sort of like this one. This one's out right now. And you just put in the secondary filter and that block. So you basically have two stage filter system, which is pretty much uh, more robust than almost any container solution I've seen on the market. So we have really focused on better filtration. And these fans are insanely oversized for what the airflow requirements are of a rack. This rack can fit up to 24 miners max, which is about 80 odd kilowatt if you're not overclocking. And each fan that pairs with a rack is about close to 20,000 CFM, far, far exceeding you know, your typical 500-ish CFM, or some people say a little more than that per miner. Uh, and so that just guarantees that if you're in a hot climate like Texas, with the fans on the intake, uh, not overheating, and they're putting positive pressure, which actually cools better because it's higher air density, that'll push past, it'll push past the, you know, airflow change, which is, which has a bit of a D rate on the airflow, but it will cool computers uh, and push past the uh, dual stage filtration system because it's oversized and that's why it's oversized. And of course the VFD uh, controller, if you're in the winter, you don't need full fan speed. So you slow it right down or it automatically slows down to zero. Uh, this is just a little demo of the airflow system we were describing with it on. So once it turns on, I'll, I'll shut up and just show how the air is moving. Uh, Spencer over here is controlling this PLC re remotely from his phone, just like you could in the field. So let's hit the fans at 100%. Give him a second to click on. Fans are right here. Air is coming in. So this is a standalone rack before it's wired out. Uh, when you see them in the buildings, the PDU is up here, the networking. But just showing you the hot pressure, hot cold pressure barrier. If you come a little closer, uh, with this new airflow system that I just showed you, where the air is coming up uh, and then pushing out, all positive air pressure. Uh, simplified the the racking and the hot pressure barrier. So basically, this piece in here which is laser cut right now for these uh, M30s. Uh, this piece is always removable and we can either build custom slots for, for the customer or if it's just coming standard, you know, if you're all M30s, it'll come with all M30 inserts. But these inserts just pull right out of the rack. There's no fastening, they just sort of slide in. Uh, you can make your own or you can use ours, but they basically just slide in like this. The miners, it, it has the outline for the miner body. So the PSU, uh, here and the, the ASIC cooling fan are separated from the hot to cold side. So all it really does, because our fans are now way oversized, it just makes the, uh, the, the main, the primary exhaust fans or inlet fans now, I guess you call them, more efficient. So that's how it works. Here we have a VFD box. This is what controls all the fans, our new, our new and improved upgraded inlet booster fans. Uh, each are three horsepower, about 19,000 CFM. This controller uh, connects, uh, 
controls the VFD, which controls the fans, as well as it controls our engines and our hash generator skids, as well as does the automatic load response, uh, response to say engine sag, frequency drop, uh, overload or under fuel on the engine system. I'll just quickly run through this. You should be able to see some of it on your screen. Uh, it's a pretty simple system. This is the first iteration of this new version. Uh, we basically have a home screen. It gives you your uh, overview of your power, your HVAC, your airflow, and your temperature and the like in your engine. We have an HVAC screen. Uh, basically, it'll, it gives you on-off uh, signal. Uh, there's alarm set points if, if, if it goes under a set point such as minimum fan speed. Uh, you're able to remotely log into your phone just like on that overlay on your screen right now, control everything on every unit and turn fan speed up or down, minimum fan speed if you want to, if you don't want to go, go below a certain speed. Uh, you put in your target temperature as long as the ambient temperature is below your target. When our heat recirculation is on, you can, it'll automatically ramp up and down to always try to match that ambient air temperature. The ambient air temperature is being read sort of down below where the intake air is coming up into the building. And effectively, so we have a HVAC screen that uh, that's where you control just purely the fan, uh, how much horsepower is being set to the fan. We have an engine screen, which we'll, we'll go through this in more detail in a future video, but basically gives you your load balancing on your engine. Uh, combined with our smart PDUs, uh, we basically do automatic load balance control. Uh, in response to say the engine reacting in real time to fuel conditions like your flare gas volume is fluctuating or other conditions that can cause over uh, overload like such as like fuel gas freezing off or all, a bunch of reasons um, so yeah it gives you the readouts um, there's a graphs tab uh, for your engine um, it shows you things like your oil psi your gas pressure your fuel gas your Total amp draw, your phases, your phase, uh, on the power graph, you get your phase average and your balance, and it'll alarm you if, it, if, if things are out of balance. Uh, engine RPM, uh, you can tell a lot on how the engine is running. If it's running constant RPM, you know things are good. If it's bumping, well, you know there's a bit of a fuel gas problem. Uh, engine temp, of course, and shutdowns appropriately on any of these set points that are out of nominal. Uh, battery voltage. So, from the historical, you can sort of see how things are, are going, and this would be if it's on an engine like a hash tray. Uh, there's an alarms page, so basically, as these alarms come up, you'd be programmed in, like text or email, it would call you out to tell you what's happening, so you can log in remotely and fix it. The reset the alarms with the history. Uh, and that's more or less it. The, the tab, one tab that uh, is not uh, yet finished is the load balancing tab, because that's with our new PDUs that are coming in. It's all uh, uh, Modbus serial port to the, to the PLC, so uh, very responsive, fast circuit control in response to changing conditions like engine overload and the like. So it's uh, more or less what the PLC system is all about. It gives you automation, temperature control, um, and remote access to, to the building.